I've been um, wanting to recognize the gentleman um, from Georgia, Mr. Ferguson, Dr. Ferguson, all day. Um, since our last hearing, you announced that you're going to leave us. And I, um, I want to tell you we're going to miss... We're going to miss your uh, choice of words. We're going to miss your leadership as the chairman of the Social Security Subcommittee. Um, but we're going to miss your friendship in this chamber, um, Mr. Ferguson. Thank you for those kind words. And um, you may regret saying you're going to miss my words after, the, after my response. Uh, <coughs> In all seriousness, I, I, I listened, Mr. Cha Mr. Chairman, to my colleague from Wisconsin, Fain on about life and protecting folks that are below the poverty level and, and, and worried about the damage that can come. And yet I've watched my colleagues on the other side of the aisle completely ignore a humani humanitarian crisis, crisis of epic proportion at our southern border. When we talk about the number of lives that are being lost or argued about here, whether it's the unborn or the mother's life, we are missing the big picture here that literally tens of thousands of our fellow Americans are dying because of fentanyl overdoses driven primarily by the cartels moving fentanyl across a wide open southern border. When we talk about preserving dollars for our most needy, we have almost 12 million people that have come across this border or will be by the end of this year. 12 million. Think about that for just a minute. That's almost more than the state of Ohio, maybe more than the, the state of Ohio. And we are not even talking about on this committee, which has jurisdiction over so many social safety net programs, how in the world you're gonna pay for that. Because these folks are not just gonna come here and completely assimilate overnight into America. That takes years to do. There's going to be pressure on our school systems, pressure on our health care systems, pressure across the board. And <clears throat> you talk about diluting resources. I just wish that we would take, we would be more intellectually honest in what we're doing. You literally have, you, 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 you're talking about, and every life is important, a small number of our fellow Americans, but you seem to be ignoring the tens of thousands of deaths due to fentanyl, the, 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 the deletion of resources because of we have so many people that have come across this border illegally that we don't know how we're going to pay for those folks when they show up, 12 million people, 12 million people, when they show up in our hospitals, when they show up in our schools, when they apply for assistance with food, with assistance for housing, Think about what is happening in, this, in New York right now. We are kicking ch school children out of the classroom to house people that are here illegally. If I'm a parent in New York, I'm going to lose my mind over that. We have s big city mayors across the country that are screaming for more federal resources, money that we don't have that we're going to have to borrow. And yet, we aren't protecting the very people that are already in this country that are American citizens. So I just, I get a little bit tired of all of, 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 this, of this outrage on this particular issue when we are missing the big picture about fentanyl overdoses and about the cost of illegal immigration and how it is going to continue to bankrupt this country because the funds simply are not here. We should be fixing Social Security. We should be fixing Medicare. We should be putting, having pro-growth policies here. At the end of the day, we're fighting, we're fighting over a knit on a gnat, and it's about doing the right thing for this country. Mr. Chairman, I hope I didn't disappoint you with my use, the use of my words, and I, again, I appreciate your kind comments, and I yield back the balance of my time.